Okay, welcome to week two, SEC 310. Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's get going. Uh, before we look at how uh, this class divides things up, let's talk about how they're generally divided up in the security field. And that is, when you look at security controls, Generally, you look at uh, can fall, fall into three categories. One is physical security. Uh, the second is uh, administrative security. And the third is uh, technical controls. Actually, we should say physical controls, physical security controls, administrative security controls, and technical security controls. Okay, so you know the job of a security professional is to reduce risk, of course, and risk equals the loss times the odds. So if something is a significant loss, but the odds are really small that it happens, that will reduce it. But uh, if something is not a major loss, but the odds are pretty good, uh, that may that may put it on your radar screen, depending. Uh, so you have four choices of what to do with uh, risk once it's identified, and there are four options for risk management. One is uh, avoidance. One is acceptance, one is transfer, and one is mitigation. So after you've calculated your uh, risks, you can do one of these four things. Now, uh, transfers generally by insurance or if you're hosting a website internally, you might uh, decide to host a third party that way, uh, depending on your agreement with them, you could transfer some of the risk. Acceptance just means you put money aside for the eventuality of being sued. You know, a good example would be Google driverless cars. Well, they could buy insurance, but they could also just, uh, you know, set aside a fund to pay out claims while they're experimenting with it. Avoidance would be if Google said, hey, we're not going to do driverless cars. The liability is too much. Mitigation would be uh, working with the controls, the sensory controls on the driverless cars and maybe buffing them up or making them more reliable or putting different controls in. Now, as a cybersecurity person, uh, most of your time will be spent doing technical, uh, deploying technical security controls like firewalls and, uh, you know, IDS, IPS, things like that, and then testing them and making sure that they work as intended and there's not ways around them. <clears throat> With technical security controls, really, by deploying them, you're using the mitigation, the mitigation uh, option. Uh, for your risk management uh, choice there. Let me do it like this just to make it a little clearer. Let's, and then let's uh, put this, let's, uh, yeah, there we go. That's, that, that I think, hopefully that makes it a little clearer maybe. 
it may not it may be more confusing but hopefully it'll make it a little <coughs> clearer yeah so technical controls that's where you're doing the mitigation like you're re trying to reduce the risk and of course you have to test them and redeploy them and you know do all that kind of stuff administrative controls this would be like uh, background checks as it mentions in the reading uh, and physical physical security controls are like closed circuit TV and fencing and bollards and things like that. So this uh, unit focuses on these two. So let's talk about that. It's physical and uh, personal, or I call this administrative security. Uh, so they, they're seeing uh, IP cameras and things interior security uh you know sign in sheets have guards check the ids intrusion detection uh you know you can look at this from a, a technical standpoint how do you keep uh people from intruding on your it resources or you can look at it in terms of physical security how do you keep people out of your plant closed circuit tvs background checks okay so <clears throat> that's that's all pretty good let's talk about give like a couple of examples of these um, this is uh from sans and they, they there's a uh i'll uh i'll put this below this video when i'm done the link to this so they they talk about background checking uh awareness training and here's really the uh personnel security separation of duties so uh, you don't put one person in charge of you know of a of a um, procedure from start to finish you have other people look at over least privilege you don't give uh, your personnel more privilege with your resources than they need to do their job job rotation is uh, you have someone periodically come in while they're on vacation and kind of look over their shoulder, make sure they're uh, doing things right. Vacation and leave. Uh, again, this allows while they're on vacation, mandatory vacation allows uh, people to check over their work, make sure they're not committing fraud. Terminations. The main thing here, and this is harder than it sounds, but... When somebody gets terminated, you want to remove their access to your resources. Monitoring and auditing. Again, uh, you need double checks in place so the fraud doesn't occur. Now, if these things aren't in place, uh, what you can have is a situation like this one where uh, this comp little town comptroller, uh, I think this town of Dixon that she, Rita Cronenwell, uh, committed fraud on, is less than 20,000 people, and she, over a period of 20 years, stole uh, something like $50 million, so, for three decades, she had a sterling reputation, she opened a account where she siphoned money off uh, she was stealing millions a year uh, and what happened how she got caught was this is a great story it was on uh, American Greed but she got into the horse uh, breeding business which is a very expensive hobby and uh, so she was you know going to horse shows and things how she got caught was there was a week-long horse show I, I think in Missouri or someplace, and uh, they got a temp in there, and the temp noticed all this money was going into this uh, account she set up to siphon off money, and that's how she got caught. This, uh, if you can look it up, it's uh, 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 something, uh, the cowgirl that could or something. Uh, write them cowgirl might be the name of the episode, but it's, uh, it's a pretty good... Uh, explanation of what can happen if you don't have good personnel controls in place uh, 
I wanted to talk a little bit about the group project. So let's go to that. Uh, this is the reading. <clears throat> okay, student teams are, uh, will address current and evolving home security vulnerabilities with the consideration of smart homes. Okay, now smart homes, of course, means uh, automation. Uh, you know, you can uh, remotely use in the web, uh, you know, set your uh, temperature of your thermostat and talk to your refrigerator and see, you know, if you need milk or not, What see what's in there, you know, to see if you can uh, have the ingredients necessary for a recipe or whatever. Uh, this is a little, uh, you know, this is probably something I might not have picked if I had written this class, but uh, I want to tell you about something that evolved uh, consumer smart home type uh, devices, and that was the Dyn cyber attack of 2016. This was a denial of service attack using uh, a threat called Mira and involved mostly IP connected uh, closed circuit TV cameras. So let's, let's read what it says here. Took place in October. You, you probably remember this. Uh, distributed denial service talking uh, the DNS provider Dyne which took out major services in Europe and North America. The group's anonymous and New World hackers claim responsibility, but uh, they haven't been able to figure it out. Uh, DNS attack. Okay, it was executed from a botnet consisting of large numbers of internet connected devices such as printers, IP cameras, that's where I think most of it came from, they finally decided. Residential gateways and baby monitors that have been affected with the Mira malware. So, that could be a part of your presentation. Um, you want to look for other, you know, holes and vulnerabilities and things that have been in the news regarding uh, the cybersecurity implications or, or uh, you know, home invasions, how does a smart home respond, things like that. So again, you know, it's, it's kind of a different topic, but uh, I divided you guys up into four groups, so you should be able to do it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for listening to this. I'll put some links down below. Have a great week. Bye.